everyone, I'm Marvo and welcome to my new series. It's called Cult Friction and I basically talk about cult movies that I really like and I'm going to be doing it once a week. And this month is October. So this entire month is going to be spooky movies. It's going to be, um, whether they're classics or B-movies, it's going to be related to horror in some way. And this first movie is going to be American movie, which is about making a horror film called Coven. Now it's it's Coven, it's not Coven, because Coven sounds too much like oven, according to the director, uh, Mark Barhart or Barkhart. And it takes place through 1996 to 1997, and it's directed by Chris Smith, and it uh, released in 1999, and it won the Grand Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival for uh, in the documentary category. It's been critically acclaimed all across the board. It's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen, just hands down. Um, and it really, really speaks to me on this like dry humor level, but it's all real. It, it seems like it's a mockumentary just because of how dry it is, but it's all 100% authentic and that's why it is the best documentary I can think of. At first he's trying to make uh, his film Northwestern, but throughout the process he kind of looks back at a short that he did some time ago, several years ago, called Coven, which is about, I believe, an alcoholic battling something. It's kind of vague. I've never actually seen his horror film, but um, it's very dramatic. It's very scary, and he's made several, several short films, horror short films. He's very inspired by um, lots of classics, uh, Kubrick, and one of the, pr or the producer for the film is his Uncle Bill, um, a very frail old man who is pretty sassy and um, such a bright light in the film. He's, he's just hilarious. We cut and finished for multiple sales. What do you think about that? And he gives him a few thousand dollars to get the film rolling and throughout the whole time uh, the filmmaker, uh, Mark, is talking about how he's going to make his money back, he's going to be a big Hollywood producer and um, it, it's just it's great. And his sidekick is Mike Shank who is the most beautiful human being, gem person, entity that I've ever seen in a documentary or film for that matter. He is so perfect with his, it's just the strangest dry humor. He talks like everything is in hesitation and his laugh is just this nervous laughter. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful to watch and um, I feel like we can all relate to Mike to a certain extent or know somebody who's that kind of oddball character um, that he's definitely like my favorite character. Even though he's a person, this is a real human being, um, he is like my favorite character to ever exist in a movie. What What's so humorous about it is that um, though they are very awkward and they don't always speak normally <laughs> um, they kind of have their own language and on top of that having like a like a Wisconsin accent um, it's it's pretty funny it's like kind of like a Fargo effect Th their genuine sense of being is what makes this film so perfect and uh, throughout this entire film you get to see not only the process of his film, but you see uh, how complicated his personal life is and his challenges. And uh, though it is a very quiet film, um, very quiet, very still, um, the only score within it is Mike Shank him playing his classical guitar, which he is quite good at. Um, it is kind of this quiet movie, but it, there's a lot of complexity to it as well. Um, a lot that we can relate to just as human beings. And um, that's why I really enjoy it. It not only showcases somebody who is relatable in some sense of just trying to figure out life, but um, you're really showcasing someone who has this incredible passion that has overtaken his entire life um, to the point where, you know, he's battling with this, I believe, 
ex-girlfriend with the kids. Um, that's just trying to figure out if he can keep the kids or not. His lifestyle is not conventional um, because he is so passionate about his films. He kind of works odd jobs here and there just to make ends meet. But um, he is, I don't think I've ever seen someone so serious and dedicated to their craft with so little. And throughout the film he is talking about how little he does have and how it, insane it seems to be putting every last dime into his project. But I think for him, if he didn't have that, especially where he is, um, there wouldn't be a point to doing anything, to living. Um, and it really brings, you know, like these people together, this community together. He hires actors and he manages to get the film finished and screened into his local theater, which is a pretty cool accomplishment in itself. I think nowadays, especially if you live in a suburb or city, like that would be pretty damn complicated to do, pretty complex. By the end of it, uh, that's like his big success and he is now working towards his sort of his next film that he wanted to work on originally, Northwestern. And by the end of the film, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but his uncle Bill dies um, the year after, or I believe towards the end of 1997, and um, leaves in his will $50,000 for Mark to create Northwestern. But um, after doing a little research, I don't think Northwestern exists, and I wish it did. I want to know what happened to Northwestern. I, I don't know if there's any interviews with Mark, but um, I, I, I know he's worked on a bunch of different projects, um, even now, is still working on his films or in film in general. We never got to see the finished product of Northwestern, but we do have the finished product of Coven, and that's my next journey is to watch that film that he put so much hard work, blood, sweat, and tears into. Um, and I think it kind of makes me think of a more recent movie, which would be Raiders, and it's not Indiana Jones Raiders, but it's Raiders. I need to read the whole entire title here. It just came out. Um, Technically, maybe last year, but this year I did see it at the silent movie theater in LA. 2015, yeah, it is last year, but it has been screening throughout this entire year all across the country. They're in a van screening it. It's DIY, it's punk as fuck, it's awesome. It's called Raiders! Exclamation point, colon, um, the story of the greatest fan film ever made. You can stream it on Netflix. It'll probably change your life a little bit um, as if you're a creator, artist, um, or you just have a dream and you want to pursue it even though you think life is just too difficult to, to pursue your dreams and to make them happen, make them into reality. Um, it's about two filmmakers who want to just finish up their remake of Raiders of the Lost Ark from when they were kids. For years they, they were working on it and uh, of course it's not just that but it's it's their personal lives too and like how it shaped them and how it, made them feel to accomplish a dream like that. So I really am drawn to films like that. And uh, even though American Movie is the least spooky um, documentary film you're probably ever gonna see, I just like kind of pulling that into October for Halloween because of the horror film that they're making. And I really suggest you and I watch Coven and to see what that man created with uh, all the hard work of his family and friends. So thanks so much for watching, and again, uh, I'll see you next week on Cult Friction. This is Marvel the Martian. Bye.